I've been in many, many ceremonies during my life that were just automatic because I was taught that's the way we do it. Prayers that were said in church that I actually stopped saying because I totally disagreed with the words of the prayer. I am not worthy. It was a big one. And um, have mercy on me for my sins. Doesn't mean that there wasn't a need for mercy and grace in my life. I think that's true for everybody. But to do it because we're asking for assistance as opposed to demeaning ourselves is a very different ritual to say, have mercy on the fact that I'm learning. Have Let me have grace when I'm with other people so that I might be able to bring your spirit clearly into the world. That was never um, an offering that was given to me to allow my presence to be the representation of something holy. It was do your best not to be an idiot or do your best not to make a mistake or sin because you're doomed to do that because you're of the way you are made. I've been in situations where we've done these gorgeous ceremonies and while I was learning what they were about, something magical and powerful happened. Can you now own that something just happened and declare for yourself um, that something is different from when it began to where it is now? And not rely on someone else telling you what just happened. That's the important part for me. It's like, what just happened is I feel very different. I feel connected or whatever was going on with me to own it. And if someone asked me, then name it instead of just assuming, well, I'm not going to tell you what just happened because I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. to, to find the place in yourself where you know something happened in you and then also not put it on all the other people. Just acknowledge that's what happened for you. Powerful ceremony that changed you. And so I thought about this thing of um, allowing things to be reclaimed in their sacredness. And there are several things that I, I, I'm aware of. One is when it comes to certain ceremonies, you're always going to have to be a beginner. But the first time we do a ceremony, you, you might be a beginner. Someone might say, this is an opening portal thing. Or they'll explain that we're going to allow something from the invisible to be present so just open up and think about that or keep your heart open. And the second time you do it, you might be um, in the process of repeating something more than once. So you're, you're starting to have an experience that this can happen more than once. You can do this, you know, like you can have a full moon ceremony every month, or you can have the new moon ceremony every month. New moon, you know, starting to a new cycle, full moon, you're lifting things up. So when something gets repeated, it becomes sacred because it's intentional over and over again. And then what's possible, I made a list, is you become the one who knows the ceremony so that um, you're not relying on someone else leading the ceremony. You are a knower of the ceremony. Then you can become a leader of a ceremony and then an inviter. I named those things as a list because I realized when it comes to rituals or things that are sacred, every time you do it, you can play one of those roles. You can be new to it, you can lead it, and you can invite. But the most important thing is knowing why you're doing it and bringing the sacred into it. I have had many experiences in airports and various other situations where someone who is a Muslim kneels down and um, puts their mat on the ground and says their prayers to Mecca. And I, I have no idea what they're saying, but just watching them do it, I am brought in to a ritual that they think is sacred. And then at the end of it, I can ask myself, what just happened? Like I feel blessed and connected to someone else's sacred experience. 